Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. Um, thanks for joining me today and I want to talk about something that I've been doing for the last couple of years but I don't think I've ever made a video about. So that is eco printing and with eco printing what we're doing is transferring ecological materials but uh, organic matter that is plants onto fabric or paper or some kind of medium. Um, now I've done this in a couple of different ways. I've done it on sock blanks and that creates a really cool effect when you knit off of the sock blank after you've printed it. Um, you get a speckly kind of sock yarn. Um, I used to sell those uh, at craft fairs at some of our shows where we vended and they were very popular. Um, a lot of people said that they just wanted to buy it and like wear it as a scarf. They didn't want to unravel it because they liked the flower pattern. And I did think for a while about doing um, printing onto silk or to wool shawls or that kind of thing. Um, but there's a number of vendors out there that are doing that. And, you know, you may, if you know me personally, um, you know that we've kind of wound down our vending. So I'm, I'm stepped away from fiber arts and crafts as a business and back into kind of hobby mode, which has really reinvigorated my interest and my joy around all things crafty. So it's been lovely. Um, so to do the eco printing part of things though, I wanted to experiment on some other media and I know that you can do this on paper, but I haven't tried that. I'm hoping to try some of that next year. Um, what I did make though were some napkins, dinner napkins. Um, I also eco printed our whole tablecloth. Um, I can't show you that cause it's too big. Um, I did that one last summer and then it, it kind of faded, uh, in the sunshine because our dining room table sits right in a big window. Um, but the, the napkins have held up really well. And you could also use these for other things, you know, decorative um, table covering or that sort of thing. So here's one example. And this is dyed with, um, this is bracken up here, these kind of brown spots. So it's a fern. And then down here, you have Black Eyed Susan. So you can see the, the purple is the center of the flower and then you get some of the yellow petals around. So the way this process works is that you have to treat your fabric um, initially with some kind of mordant, some kind of chemical binder that will hold the dye, the pigment out of the plant material. Otherwise, you'll just get a stain um, and then the stain will wash out the next time you launder the thing. Just like getting a stain on your clothes, you put it, run it through the wash and the stain comes out. So what you want is a dye, a fixed color, not a stain. Um, and to do that, I used aluminum acetate. Um, now, are, there are different kinds of binding chemicals. Some you can get from natural sources like tannin from tree nuts or bark. Um, you can get it from things like rhubarb leaves and other natural materials. I prefer to buy the manufactured chemicals because I think they work better and they're also less likely to sadden or shift the color of the natural dye. So things like iron can also be used as a mordant, but it will turn everything kind of a gray or brown color. Um, so I, I prefer to, to stick with the chemical mordants for doing this kind of work. Um, and you wanna use the right kind of alum. So there are a number of different chemicals labeled as alum. Alum just is shorthand for aluminum. So it's some kind of aluminum salt or heavy metal salt, but you won't know which one unless you re read the fine print. So aluminum acetate is what you use for cellulose fiber, such as cotton, linen, hemp, anything made out of a plant. Um, aluminum sulfate or aluminum potassium sulfate is the type of alum that you use for protein fibers, such as wool, yak, llama, silk, anything that comes from an animal. And it really does matter. Um, protein fibers are easier to dye than cellulose fibers. Um, but you can get decent results with cellulose fibers. I'm still fine tuning my method and I've only used the alum by itself. There are instructions out there on the web that, and in, in natural dye books as well that talk about uh, using a combination of alum and then also uh, some kind of protein to help further adhere the, uh, the, the color from the plant onto the fabric. So you're soaking it in fermented soy milk or dairy milk for a couple of days, um, things like that. I haven't tried any of those methods. I haven't had the time or inclination to do so, but I may in the future. And if you've used 
sort of multi-step mordanting process and you know more about this, please feel free to share any information you care to in the comments. So once you've mordanted your fabric, and I would use either the instructions on the Botanical Colors website, they have a lot of very good clear instructions about using the natural dye stuff that they sell. Um, so you could use their instructions or the instructions on the package if it tells you how to use the product. Um, usually you have to let it soak at least overnight in the alum. Sometimes you cook it, sometimes you do a cold. Um, but once you've mordanted your fabric, then you will gather your plant material that you want to use. And you can use different kinds of things. Some will be more effective than others. Um, so you can use t uh, plants that are high in tannin, things like tree leaves usually work pretty well. Um, things like pine needles don't tend to work very well because they have all that sap in there and it kind of blocks the, the physical process of getting the, the color into the fabric. Um, but many flowers, wildflowers, as well as flowers that you can grow in your garden, uh, do work well. Here's a sunflower in the middle of this one. And it was mostly the center cone of the sunflower that you can see there. But if you kind of look, there's a ring of, of other material around that one. So sunflowers were fun. Um, a happy uh, find for us was that milkweed, which we get here in abundance, um, dyes this beautiful kind of electric green color. So this, this whole area here would be a milkweed leaf. And just a note on foraging and, and picking things, you obviously want to go very lightly on the land um, and on the earth when you're doing this. So just pick a couple of items. You don't need, you know, armfuls of this stuff and, um, you know, be respectful and judicious when you're harvesting. Leave, leave most of it for the wildlife and the bees. Um, and, you know, if you're picking in a public area or something, make sure that that's okay to take things before you just jump in and start, start going wild with picking. This is probably my most saturated example. And in the middle there, you can see a, another leaf. And then on the edges here, we have marigolds, which started out sort of more orange, but they've oxidized. So they've gone brown, but I don't mind that. And then we do also have a little bit of orange here. Um, it's actually showing up more on the back, but that, that orange right there is cosmos, which is a really cool flower to grow, and the bees love it. So I encourage you, even if you just have a, a planter or you know a pot out on your patio or something, to try to grow cosmos, um, and then you can also eco print with it. So it's a fun it's a fun process. Once you um, get your plant matter <laughs> on your piece of fabric, you're going to press it in as as much as you can. Um, and then you're going to roll the piece of fabric up as tightly as you can. You want to wrap it in, I use cling film, um, so a brand name is Saran Wrap, but something like that. You want to make sure it's a heat resistant kind of wrap. Um, don't use natural bees wrap or anything like that, it'll melt, um, because what we're going to have to do is heat set the color. So you need something uh, like cling film, I suppose you could try something like aluminum foil if you wanted to be more environmentally friendly. What I do is I reuse my saran wrap a few times so that it's not quite so wasteful. Um, and you could try just putting rubber bands or something around them and not using the cling film, but I found that the cling film works the best. So um, do whatever you need to do, however you feel you're being like the most ecologically responsible that you can. Um, you can try different methods, but you want to wrap you want to make sure that that plant matter has really solid contact with your fabric or whatever you're trying to um, eco print onto, wrap it really tightly, and then you're going to steam it. And what I use for this is a big, it's, it's a, a turkey cooking crock pot. Um, it's not a turkey fryer. It's a big wide vessel that's like a crock pot, but it has a temperature control on the side and you can set that. And I like to steam for at least two hours then turn off the heat and leave it overnight. And that really helps set the color and I've gotten pretty good results that way. I will say that um, there's a woman that I've seen on social media who does like a hammering technique and I don't really understand how that works. I did try um, on one of my recent attempts, uh, I tried on this one actually to, to hammer some of these things in, but they didn't turn out very well. Like I think I think this one was hammered, but this one wasn't. So I don't know if I just wasn't hitting it hard enough or 
something else was not not the same in my technique. Um, this person I'm thinking of offers a class for like $300. You can learn her technique, but I'm not going to spend that money on something that I could probably figure out with a little trial and error. So I'll let you know if I figure out the hammering thing. Um, it does look very cool because, you know, she hammers a leaf and then peels it off. And then, of course, it's like a perfect, bright, saturated imprint of that leaf. So I don't know. Your mileage may vary. This is about as good as I've been able to do, and I'm pretty happy with that. I like how sort of mm, imprecise it looks. It looks very organic and natural. And I kind of like the surprise, too, of unwrapping the fabric after it's been steamed and cooled overnight and sort of being surprised about what the results were. Um, someone else who does a really good job of doing eco-printing um, who's not the person I was talking about with the hammering. Um, her Instagram profile is Daughters of the Red Sunset, and she does amazing eco printing and then layers that with other kinds of natural dye. So um, go check out her. And if you can ever take a class with her, she's located in North Carolina, I believe. But if you can ever take a class with her, I would highly recommend that because she seems like she's very experienced and really knows what she's doing. Um, so yeah, uh, that's been my experience with eco printing onto fabric. Um, it's been, you know, maybe not perfect, but it's been a lot of fun and I've enjoyed the results and I'm going to keep going with it and seeing what else I can do with it. Um, if you have any tips for me on getting better results or more consistent outcomes, I would welcome those ideas. Um, thank you again for watching. Let me know if you've tried eco printing and uh, I'll see you again in another video. Thanks so much.